What's up boys and girls, welcome back to another episode of Tales of the Neon Sea. We're about to head out to continue our, continue our investigation of uh, Mrs. Perry. Uh, we have to get permission to investigate the robot core. We gotta go talk to Royce once again. I didn't kill her, not me. No, not me. Oh, they got some like homeless from the street. We have solid evidence and a clear motive. You can't hope to get away with it. And all I, I have all the means to get the truth out of you when we're back at the police station. This uh, doesn't look that good. Rex, you're the person I need right now. This is, this is the suspect, Christopher. He is one of the homeless people from the neighborhood, and was pawning jewelry at the store this morning. The jewelry belonged to Miss Perry. Oh, okay. I see. This guy? I've seen him around. He's incapable of murder. Maybe theft and bl burglary. Uh, burglar burglary. But not murder. First of all, the timing is right. According to the investigation of the corpse, the theft happened four to five hours after the time of death. In the wanted... If he wanted to murder someone for their valuables, he wouldn't have waited hours before he took them off the body. Secondly, there are no traces of him at the primary murder scene, Mrs. Perry's home. If he wasn't present at the primary scene, it means he wasn't the thief. He was the thief, but not the murderer. Exactly, you are absolutely right, sir. I stole the jewelry, but I didn't kill anyone. Based on all the evidence we've collected at the crime scene, the little, green, the little girl named Jenny should be our prime suspect right now. The main suspect is a little girl, what the hell is wrong with you? Alright, Carl, take him away and we'll talk later. Yes, sir. Let's go, pal. Don't try anything funny. Who can't believe our main suspect is a little girl? But, hey. Right, I need you to get Jenny. I have to ask her some questions face to face. Okay, I'll get her. We need to find out more about the robot, too. Yes, there's a lot of suspicious about. There's a lot sus a lot suspicious about them. I need your authorization to examine him from the inside. No problem. I'll find you if anything turns up. Okay, I think we got the authorization. Let's investigate the robot. Okay, yeah. The outer shell of the robot's head. In order to access the electronic brain, I need to first unlock each slot and remove the covering. I can proceed by sliding up pieces that aren't interlocked with others. The age of this robot means that the system isn't too complicated. What? I don't get I don't get it. What? What do you mean slide out? Slide through where? No, wait. Oh, here we go. Okay, nice. <laughs> A primitive form of anti-tamper protection. Modern robots don't use this system anymore. I just need to move the signal from the center target. Oh, is this like a puzzle or something? What the f- 
but this goes back here. Yeah. So weird. Up. Wait. Okay. This is so weird. Where the hell? There we go. <clears throat> what the? There's an implanted device. Hmm. What's going on? This is the robot's memory? Why didn't he save Mrs. Perry's life? That's a violation of robot principles. My head, it hurts so bad. Hey Rex! Rex, what's wrong? Rex! What's wrong with you, Rex? You seem to be in great pain just now. I don't know. I think there's something wrong with this robot. There's some kind of device implanted in its brain. Well, talk about that later. The case has been taken over by the sec the Secret Service Division and we need to withdraw from the investigation. The SSD? What the hell is going on? We found Jenny. Turns out she's the daughter of an important man. No sooner had I retrieved their file than the order to transfer authority of the investigation came in. They're already here. This place is now under our control. Leave as soon as possible and stay out of our investigation. Man in black. <laughs> the fuck is going on now? He's weaving. Inspector Royd, it's quite surprising that you've... You're asking a private detective to assist with your investigation. Rex found a crime scene, so we asked him to help with the investigation. That's all. You just asked him for help? Is that standard police procedure? And I've heard you decided to make our Miss Jenny a suspect. Jenny, can you tell me what happened yesterday? I was at Alice's tea party and went home when it was over. We found your fingerprints on the tea sets on the table, so Mrs. Perry was having you as her guest then? Well, I was having my usual visit to Mrs. Perry's place, like I promised. I stayed for just a while and I have no idea what happened later. Please tell the truth, Jenny. I've seen the robot steward's memories and I know you were there when Mrs. Perry was immobilized, immobilized on the couch. The steward went crazy and attacked Mrs. Perry. I, I ran away because I was scared. I'm afraid that's not possible. From the splash of blood, the strike came from below Mrs. Perry's height. The robot steward is simply too tall to have delivered this track consistent with the evidence we have discovered at the scene. The blow was also not strong enough to have been inflicted by a robot. All signs points to a child. That's... I... Miss, you don't need to answer his questions. We'll find a professional to record the proper testimony later. Detective, you viewed the robot's memories without permission, didn't you? About your so-called lethal weapon, where is it? William comes to save the day, yes. <laughs> is that is that the This is it. Well, now that we have the alleged murder weapon, all we need to do is match the blood and fingerprints. Well that's our job now. Please leave immediately. Well Inspector Royds, may I should Maybe I should have a chat with your superiors. 
That won't be necessary. We're just about to leave. Wait a minute. I have something for Jenny. Whatever you have for Mrs. Jenny, give it to her now and leave immediately. Oh, it was her gift. Okay, yeah. Jenny, this is from Mrs. Perry. Is it for me? Is this? Dear Jenny, you are a kind and lovely girl. After coming to chat with me, today is your birthday and you're about to become a little adult. I know you like Elizabeth very much, so I have decided to give her to you today. I know you'll definitely be good to her. I believe this because you are a loving child. By the way, I've also made a nameplate, which has already been engraved with your name. From today, Elizabeth is yours. I hope that you'll grow up happily and I will always be happy with your favorite cakes and fruit teas when you need them. Your Grandma Perry. Oh, that's so nice. But how could this be? I didn't want to harm her. Mrs. Perry, I'm sorry. That robot, he... Jenny, what about that robot, can you tell? Enough! Inspector Royds, get this person out of here. He should never have been here in the first place. God damn it, we were so close to discovering what the fuck happened. Royd, I believe there is something unusual about that robot. If we give up now, we'll lose critical evidence. Now that the SSD has taken over, we can't really continue the investigation, even if we wanted to. To hell with those guys. Can you get a picture of that implanted device? I didn't have a chance to take one. It won't be easy. You had an unusual reaction earlier, didn't you? Did something happen? Well, I'm not quite sure. Now that I think about it, maybe something on that robot affected me. I see. Also, there's something else. But let's talk later tonight, somewhere quiet. There's a good bar I know. Alright, I need to ask someone about the implanted device first. I need to head back to the station now. I'll send you the address of that bar I mentioned. Okay, see you later. Well done, William. How did you find that lethal weapon? Meow, 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 meow. <laughs> William was meowing and dancing. It seems that he had quite an experience. Hmm, going back in time two hours ago. Elizabeth, are you saying it was you who took the candle stand away, meow? Yes, all I was all I was thinking was I couldn't let Jenny hit Miss Perry with that thing again, so I took it away. Good thinking, but now it's a very important piece of evidence. If we can get it back, we can confirm this the suspect. But but I lost it. Calm down, Elizabeth, it's okay. Please, tell me what's happened. I was so scared after I jumped off Mrs. Perry's window. Uh, windowsill that before I knew what was happening I had run into Biocat's territory then Biocat's what the fuck it's all my fault hmm the Biocat's territory a falling billboard I think I know the place really that's great Elizabeth, time is running out. I need to find that lethal weapon now. Get some rest and wait for me. That's <laughs> so cool. Now I'm playing with William again. Don't waste any time. Get the lethal weapon, meow. Okay. Caution, electricity. Yeah, I don't think we can get there. missing a lever, is it? Okay. Who's this guy? Martin. Thanks for the insightful leadership of the boss. We cats have driven those damn biocats from the Fitcher family out of this district. We cats are the most powerful family. Okay. Bourbon's family base. Tessio went and stole the catnip again. He told us all he was clean, but look at the trouble he's caused. He deserved to be punished by the boss, Meow. Who knows what kind of sickness that blue cat got from the human beings. He's been calling himself an artist recently. What a bizarre color of fur. Just like those bio cats, humans have such strange tastes. <laughs> 
One of the boss's favorite quotes, each cat has their own destiny. My destiny is to be a slave for Mrs. Miss Connie. Oh, Miss Connie. Okay. Is this like, is this like a family of cats? No passing. The no passing order is the only effect. You cannot proceed without the permits. To meow with it. <laughs> it seems like I'll have to pay a visit to the boss, the infamous Vito Bourbon. Also, we have acquired lots of uh, files. I didn't check them last time. So we have Mrs. Perry's diary. I was feeling a bit upset when I saw you off. They say in the... Oh, no, we saw... Wait. Yeah, we saw we saw this one. Notes on Mrs. Perry's case. I found the body among the trash after folding William into an alley near my home. Okay, we know all of this as well. We figured out who the murder is and how the crime was committed. As the murder was concealed, we're both very sloppy. The only unknown is the robot left at the crime scene, even if he wasn't part of the murder, he likely assisted in some way. And we have a file of the robot as well. A butler robot of the Caroline family, saved by Kathy Caroline during the pure blood baptism at the end of the 21st century. He joined the Caroline family to become Kathy Caroline's personal steward. He was responsible for the recruitment and training of other servants and was regarded as a model butler among the royal families. After Kathy's oldest granddaughter was born, he took the responsibility of taking care of her daily life. And we also have the electronic brain retrofit notes. The robot that broke down at the Miss Perry's crime scene. Uh, the electronic brain was broken apart and was connected to an outside device through a wire. Okay. Uh, what else is there? We're building the special case team. The special mission squad was established to deal with the robot uprising and was later disbanded after the leadership of the robot terrorist organization, the revolutionists, had been eradicated. Later he, last year, Augusto, a robot leader, announced his participation in the election campaign and this resulted in some public order chaos. In order to maintain stability and to prevent the appearance of other harmful organizations, the government decided to reactivate the special mission squads. The existence of this new team is not public knowledge. And we have feline turf wars as well. The biocats came out of nowhere and quickly took over several streets that had belonged to the street cats. They started meaningless fights with all cats and dogs nearby. As a representative of the pure-blooded cats, the Bourbon family is duty-bound to confront these intruders. Under the leadership of Vigor Bourbon, the family and the bio-cats began a long war, during which the Bourbon family took in a lot of street cats to assist with our counter-attacks. Attacks. Progress was good in the beginning, but as the bio-cats' territories shrank, the Bourbon family slowed down their attacks, and the two sides entered the period of uneasy, uneasy peace. Because many of the Bourbon's attacks had been expected by the Biocats, rumors of a mole have long persisted. Family members have all, all have their suspicions, but the situation hasn't yet changed. Everyone is feeling unsafe at the moment, but they know Don Vigor will sort everything out once he discovers the identity of the mole. <laughs> so they have cat gangs as well, that's pretty cool. Oh, there's a lever there. I kind of need that. Are you interested in my work? Uh, I'm more interested in that control stick. A cat's a fine taste, I see. Perhaps you are my soulmate. Or you see, that is my masterpiece. <laughs> sure, can you give it to me? The other cats don't appreciate my work. You really want it? I can give it to you on one condition. If you can answer three questions correctly about me and my family, I'll give you the control stick. Oh god. Are you ready for the questions? Uh, I guess. What is my profession, Meow? You're an artist. Correct. I am a rising star artist. Next question. A quotation from the boss. Oh, this is... Each cat has his own destiny. Correct. I have my own destiny too. And that is heart. Next question. What is the name of our rival family? Fitch... a uh, Fitcher family. Yep. Correct! Those biocats have no artistic tastes after all. You answered all correctly. You are... you really are my soulmates. As promised, here's my all-time greatest masterpiece as a gift. A very artistic looking control stick. It's so artistic! 
All right, we got the uh, thingy. Uh, where are we going? Outside. So let's go down here. Can we? Oh, right. Sweet. Can we jump on it now? Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. Fishbowl here. Oh, just killed all those fishies. Oh, snap. Oh, well. It was necessary. We could transverse onto this uh, ledge here. Go up. Oh, this seems like this is like the poster. Yeah, my eyes are blinded by the light. Wolkenberg. I'm so jealous of those guys down here getting to see Miss Anna every day. Huh? You want to meet the boss? Well, I can get you over here if you can turn the color of the neon lights into the color of Miss Anna. Oh, right. I guess it was red, red, yellow, green, I think it was. Let me try. Yes, Miss Anna's hair has been correctly restored. You deserve a meeting with the boss for your courage and wisdom. Jump onto the platform. Meow. Nice. <laughs> Uses his, himself as a counterweight. Hey, we're about to meet the boss. Bourbon family's living room. Uh, it's quite dark in here. Hello? Meow, hold it right there. Who do you think you are just walking in here like that? It's okay, Bradsy. Let's not scare our little friend here. Sorry, boss. I was just worried that there's no need for concern. In fact, he might have arrived at precisely the right time. The Bourbon family could use a cat like him. You must be William. I've heard about you. Respectful Don Vito, I need your permission to enter the Biocat's territory. Courageous and respectful, these virtues are mostly lost among the younger generations. This is a turbulent time for our family and its territory, so I declare a no passing order. No cats shall pass except for family. The good news for you is that I require some assistance for a very important task. If you agree to do it, you will have my blessing to travel as you please. Well, I guess I have... I don't have any choice. Seems like the Godfather has given me an offer I can't refuse. <laughs> each, cat, each cat has their own destiny. Now that you are here, make most of it. Well, Don Vito, what can I do for you? A biochemical cat has infiltrated our family and it's a threat to us all. I need your help to root him out. Do you have any idea who it might be? Well... <laughs> Talk to my counselor, Mountain, about the details. He knows all about these biocats. All right, I got it. Looks like you need some rest. Tell him if you have any clues. <laughs> you can trust on this. You will be a friend to the Bourbon family if you complete this task successfully. Okay, we guess, I guess we're gonna have to talk to Martin. I guess. Oh, this like weird mannequins here. We get. We're gonna have to talk to Martin about the details of these uh, biocats, but shall do it on a future episode. I'm gonna take a quick break and we'll come back with more cat adventures. See you next one. Bye bye.